سيدنا مدينا وحبيب قلوبنا وقاد مسيرتنا محمد وعلى اله الطيبين الطاهرين. <تصفيق> السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته اخواني واخواتي brothers and sisters. May Allah accept your deeds and your fasting in this great holy month and we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى ان شاء الله to guide us and to support us to gain all the thawab that he preserved for us. If you want to talk about guidance and hidayah al Quran, we believe that this book, the holy book, it is the book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent it down to guide us to the best, to the right path. And we have so many verses in the Quran talked about hidayah or guidance. This ayah in Surah Al-Insan, verse number 3, إِنَّا هَدَيْنَاهُ سَبِيلَ إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا Verily we showed him the way, we showed the mankind, whether he be grateful or ungrateful. So we showed him the way of guidance and it's up to him to take it and be grateful or not. There is another verse, this is in Surah Ibrahim, the verse 1. Verse number one. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Alif Lam Ra, Kitab Nan Zalnahu Ilaika Litukhrijan Nas in Maturamati Ilan Nur, Bidni Rabbi Himila Surat Al Aziz Al Hamid. Alif Lam Ra, this is a book which we have revealed unto you in order that you might lead mankind out of dark darkness into light. So what is what is it? It is the guidance it is the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it to the Prophet. And we believe this is the Holy Quran, it is between our hands, it is the great guidance for all mankind, not just for Mu'mineen. Because also we read in other verses, This is at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay, so this is the book and there is no doubt about it. It is the guidance for who? For the Muttaqeen. In some interpretation it says that this book, the best who can benefit from it is the Muttaqeen. We have another verse here. كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ وَلِيَتَذَكَّرُوا أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ So it is what? This book is the Quran which we have sent down to you full of blessings. Blessings it means what? Kathirul Barakah it means Kathirul Khayrat. So with good, with a lot of goodness or goods in it. Goods not, you know, items. It is good things in it. That they may ponder over its verses. And there is another verse which is talking about guidance in Quran. Qala thamar rabbukuma ya Musa. This is a kind of you know, kind of dialogue between Musa السلام, and Pharaoh when he wanted to ask him about Allah. قال, Musa? Because he was talking to Musa and Harun. Pharaoh said, 
Who then, O Musa, O Mus Musas, is the Lord of you too? Means you, Musa and Harun. Then Musa answered and replied, Our Lord is he who gave to each thing, thing its form and then guided to the light or, you know, provided with the guidance. Now, brothers and sisters, if this is the book between our hands, so why we have seen so many people have been deviated or went or they already didn't follow the guidance of the Quran? And maybe even some Muslims will ask or have so many questions. Why we are the Muslims didn't take the guidance? And if we took this guidance of the Quran, we're supposed to be the best nations in this world. So why we are not? Why we have seen all these kinds of conflicts and fighting between Muslims? All this kind of clashes between nations? So why do we have this? Some people say, okay, why do we have all these, you know, disasters like, you know, tsunami or other things? The answer is, brothers and sisters, Quran is the guidance of who? The guidance for everyone, for every human being on this earth, for mankind, for people with, you know, common sense for people who are really genius ones and you know those who are scientists for different levels of people for even the, the lowest level of understanding that those people can understand only very limited thing from the Quran and we believe this is the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent it to us to make it what? to make us good people in different aspects and also through these verses I will talk a little bit about the last one that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and what? and He gave us our what? guidance so in this ayah is talking about everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything and provided with its guidance. So what does it mean? With every element that can make it continue to life and grow up and survive in this world. For animals, for planets, even for what we call Jamadat, you know, the mountains, the seas, because provided with a system that can make it go all the way to the end of the life until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decide this is the end. So even the universe, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, provided with what kind, with the kind of, you know, system. Let me give you some examples of the animals, which is so interesting, and I think if you can go and search in Google or YouTube, you'll find a lot of these amazing things. One of these stories, it is an old one, or it is an old, you know, facts about, you know, the hens or chicken. They try to get all these eggs without laying the chicken on it to have the babies. They failed. Do you know why? Because they didn't flip or move the eggs. The first day and the last day before hatching, you cannot touch it. But the other days, you need to move it. Why? To mix up all the items inside the egg. This is an old fact. There is another one. They said there is a special, uh, it's not eagle, there's something like the smaller one, like the falcon. They call the Egyptian falcon. Do you know what, what do they eat? They are in Africa. They used to take a piece or it is a rock, not so big and will fly so high and drop it. Do you know where do they drop it on? They will drop it, drop it on the eggs of ostrich, that in Na'ana. Because it is so big and so strong. So imagine who taught them to do that? Who taught the you know, chicken to move their eggs and flip it? Who 
you're telling that, you know, animal to drop it and to aim it, he is a very good shooter at the same time. And it will hit it. And there are so many other things. There is one of the animals when he eats the snake, they saw it, they watched it that he will eat a bite and then he will go to a certain tree as if he, you know, uh, try to uh, lick it and then he will come back to eat another bite. Then they discover there is something will uh, diffuse or make the poison, you know, inactive. So who taught that animal to do that? It is guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who taught these turtles who live, used to live in Brazil to travel hundreds of miles through the ocean, Atlantic Ocean, to go on the shore of Africa and just lay down their eggs and then these new babies will live and then they will go back. So who told them about that? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what we believe in that guidance are two kind. It is through our nature, what we call al-hidayat taqwiniya. And we have another one, it is al-hidayat tashriqiya. When the Quran told us about all, you know, the Islamic rulings in the Quran. So hidayat taqwiniya is through us, ourselves, the animals, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. And we have another kind of Hidayah. Still, we are talking about the Hidayah of the Quran. Who is going to get the Hidayah of the Quran? Let's, let us ask another question. How the Quran guide us? He is talking to what? He is supposed to talk to what? To our emotions? Or to our hearts? To our intellects? To what? To the adults only? No. Quran has two ways. To talk to the intellect, to the reasoning, to the reason, to the aql. And also he's talking to the qalb, to the soul, to your feeling for both. And we have a group of Muslims, unfortunately, some of these group of Muslims, some of them they are Shia. They believe that, you know what, Quran is so difficult and we cannot understand it. Only the prophets or the prophet and the imams. But us, no, we can't. And also they don't use intellect. And when we are talking about the sources of, you know, of ishtihad or the Islamic rulings, so they don't count Quran and Aql as one of them. They only count narrations or hadith plus the ijma the conscience of ulama, only two. And Mutahari said, they are al -ikhbariyin. They rely on narrations only. Unfortunately, we cannot follow this way because we believe Quran, as it said by itself, it is hudan for everyone, likullinnas. And when the Prophet was sent with the Quran to take them and lead them from, take them out from darkness to light. So it is to everyone. Anyhow, so this is a group of Muslimin. There are another one, al shairah for example. They are very similar to al ikhbariyin That's why they believe that Allah, astaghfirullah, he is like a body. And he has hands and, you know, legs and all this stuff. And you have another group of Muslimin. They interpret the Quran in a different way. For example, those are, you know, al Ismailiyah, they are a group of Shia, and also those al Mutasawwifah. Uh, these two groups, they try to interpret the Quran in their own way, and they claim that only us, we can interpret the Quran, not everyone. Let me give you an example. When they recite the Quran about, you know, this, these verses about Ibrahim alayhi salam and his son, Ishmael. So what do they say? They say, or they interpret, Ibrahim, he is the aql, intellect. And his son, Ismail, he is the nafs. So as if, aql supposed to defeat and slaughter the 
mess, which we do not accept. And those Ismailis, they believe in only six Imams, and imagine even our ulama, they don't consider them among our Shia group. And those who became the rulers of Egypt at Dawla al Fatimiyya in certain years. Anyhow, so those people, or these groups, they really treated the Quran in the wrong way. No, we cannot, we cannot accept this. First of all, Quran is for every human being, Muslim or non-Muslim, with different kind of levels, alim or jahil, and also Quran encourages us to ponder, to think, and gave them a great, great level. Yes, Quran is not for everyone to, to be interpreted or interpreted. So the tafsir of Quran not supposed to be for everyone. And some of those, you know, new, uh, not scholars, thinkers, who said, you know, why only a group of people they can interpret the Quran? Like Nasr Hamid Abu Zaid. He said, those Mufassirin, they have intellect and we have intellect. They are men and we are men. So we are equal. We can interpret the Quran, we say no. And we know that the Prophet said, anyone who tried to interpret the Quran according to his desire, so he will be in hell. So it needs a specific qualification to be interpreted. So we do not accept this. Now, Quran talked to the Aql, to every intellect in this world. That's why you can see even non-Muslims, they will be attracted to the Quran. Plus, what, will, what do the Quran you know, talk to the Aql? By what? By giving them these examples, some scientific hints, like about, you know, from the beginning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran clearly that this earth is not flat, it is like a ball. So who discovered this? So we can say the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that. It is not after 400, 500 years or, you know, 1000 years. Anyhow, it is true that stories of the prophets and other you know nations through the examples and anyone who wanted to study the Quran he will not find any kind of contradiction in the Quran. So yes, this is what is in the Quran. Now also Quran talked to the soul or to the aqil, to the to the qalb. That's why we have seen some Christians when they listen to the Quran they start to cry. Why? Because these the words of the Quran touched the hearts of those people. And this is not easy. That's why you can see some people when they recite the Quran, they will cry. I remember one of those Imams of Salat, when he started to pray immediately, he started to, you know, when he was reciting the Fatiha, with all this spiritual environment, he started to cry. And he made everyone cry with him. Why? Because these words will touch the hearts of Mu'minin. So Quran talked to both, to the heart and to the aql, to intellect, to be so effective in this aspect, in guiding humans to the right path. So. I will stop and inshallah I'll continue another night to talk about the aspects of Quran of what? Of guidance. And we believe it is in different kind of aspects. Intellectual one, spiritual one, social one, you know, ethical one, economical one, all of them. Inshallah I will try to elaborate on it on another night. I will switch to Arabic inshallah. تجد العشرات من الآيات تتحدث عن الهداية وبمعاني مختلفة إذن هناك آيات ولكن حديثنا هو عن كيفية أن القرآن يقود الناس إلى الطريق الصواب هذا هو معنى الهداية هو أن يأخذ أحد بأيديك إلى الصواب إلى الطريق المستقيم الهداية على نوعان هداية تكوينية وهداية تشريعية والهداية التكوينية أخواني هي لكل المخلوقات أن الله سبحانه وتعالى لأن في هذا الكون ما هو الموجود في هذا الكون 
إما الخالق وهو الله سبحانه وتعالى وإما المخلوقات والله سبحانه وتعالى قال لنا هو الذي أعطى كل شيء خلقه ثم هدى يعني خلق الأشياء أوجدها من العدم بعد أن لم تكن ثم هداها ثم وضع لها النظام الذي يؤمن لها استمرارها ووجودها هذا ينطبق على كل الموجودات ما عدا الانسان. الانسان باعتبار ان الله سبحانه وتعالى هداه تكوينا من خلال وجود الفطره ومن خلال وجود العقل ومن يعني هذه المحبه التي زرعها في القلوب للايمان. لكن يبقى ان الانسان هو الذي يختار ولهذا علينا ان ننسجم مع اراده الله التشريعيه، مع الهدايه التشريعيه. على كل الحيوانات ضربنا بعض الأمثلة لطيفة جدا مثلا هذه الحيوانات التي هداها الله كيف أنه خلقها بهذه الطريقة كيف وضع لها هذا السيستم بعضهم يعلق تعليق لطيف يقول أنتم شفتوا مثلا حيوانات تهتف مثلا هنا مثل ما يقولون الشعب يريد إسقاط النظام أكو هنا الحيوانات تهتف يريدون يسقطون مثلا الملكة أو الكلا لا أكو سيستم هم مثل اللي عندهم سيستم واحد تروح إلى مملكة النمل مملكة النحل مثلا اكو ملكة اكو مجموعة ذكور عددهم جدا قليل واكو العاملات وهذول نظام العاملات مقسم قسم لخدمة البيوت، قسم لخدمة الملكة، قسم للدفاع، قسم للتهوية، قسم للبناء، قسم للاستطلاع مثل الجواسيس، يعني نظام كامل تقعدهم ما يحيدون عنه، من علمهم؟ الله سبحانه وتعالى. بعد تلقى مثلا بعض الحيوانات اللي فعلا مثلا النباتات الله سبحانه وتعالى وفر لها سبل الاستمرار في حياتها من خلال البحث عن الماء ومثلا نشوف هذا نبات الصبار بطريقه محدده الله سبحانه وتعالى خلقه وهي الاشواك حتى تمنع عنا كذا لكن ورقه ياخذ الماء وما يخليه يطلع يعني يكون حتى يمتص الماء منين من الجو لكن ما يخليه يترشح اذا اكو عملية الله سبحانه وتعالى خالقه بطريقه وحتى هي مثلا يعني شلون تحافظ على المياه؟ سبحان الله، لا يمكنك الا ان تقول سبحان الله. هذا الخلق كله اذا يدار من قبل الله، الله خلق والله نظم واوجد هذا النظام العظيم والدقيق الذي لا يوجد مثله. هذه هدايه تكوينيه. الانسان ايضا الله خلق لكن الله في نفس الوقت قال له هذا القران هو الهدايه لك، هو الطريق الصواب. الله كيف يخاطب الناس؟ يخاطبهم من خلال العقل ومن خلال القلب او الروح او النفس، ليس فقط من خلال اتجاه واحد. ولهذا نشوف ان بعض الناس يعني فعلا ينجذبون الى القران من خلال ما فيه من ادله موضوعيه وكلام منطقي، وبعضهم يقول انا من قرات القران وكانه انا قرات القران من زمن سابق او كذا في حب القران. ولهذا يسلم، اما احنا المسلمين اخواني فهو القران بين ايدينا وعلينا ان نبحث عن اسرار البيان القراني واهميه هذا الكتاب الذي بين ايدينا، هو ان نتفكر ونتدبر بالقران فيزداد علمنا ويزداد وعينا ويزداد ايماننا. القلب اخواني الانسان يقرا القران خلي يقرا بقلبه، اولا اول ما ينزل القران لازم يعرف انه هذا كتاب الله، كل كلمه الله سبحانه وتعالى خلاها في موضعها الذي يريد يعني بحكمة في غاية فكل كلمة وكل حرف هو موضوع لغاية ولهدف لازم نعرف أهمية القرآن ونخليه شنو يتصل بقلوبنا بعض الناس من الصير عنده مصيبة يشوفه يقول له أقرأ قرآن ما يقرأ يقول لك أنا أقرأ ما أستفيد سمعت الشيخ اليوم تحدث عن هالمسألة فعلا واقعية لكن أكو بعض الناس من الصير عنده اناس ولا مصيبه ولا كانه يعني متاثر بها ذاك التاثر الكبير اللي تهزه واللي تخليه يسقط امام المحنه وتشوفه متمسك بالقران. احد الاخوان عنده ابنه مصيب هذا المسكين كان في زورق مع اصدقائه الزورق تحرك بالعجل هو كان جالس في مؤخره الزورق وقع فضربته المراوح مراوح المحرك ضربت البخل فالمهم اخذوه الى المستشفى والطبيب قال له الحمد لله يعني انت غيرك كان مات لو متاخرين بعد شويه كان انت رحت. فالوالد والده وياه كان دائما لازم القران ويقرا. 
فحتى الطبيب استغرب قال له تجسد قال له انا اقرا القران قال له شو معنى؟ قال له شو في دعاء الى ابني يعني شو هذا شاف الوالد عنده فتحه من السكون من الاستقرار النفسي مو كلش من هذا من شاف ابنه بهالطريقه اذا القران يعطيك سكينه يعطيك خشوع يعطيك استقرار يرجعك الى توازنك ولهذا القران الانسان يقراه بقلبه يقرا بروحه يقرا بوعي الباطني باحساسه يختلف عما يقرا فقط بعقله، نحتاج الى عقل والى روح. مره تقعد تتدبر ومره تحاول دخله الى قلبك تخليه يمس مشاعرك. وبهذا يقودنا القران الى ما هو الصواب والمعنى الصحيح. واشرنا بالانجليزي الى بعض المجاميع من المسلمين اللي ما يهتمون او اللي اخرجوا القران من مصادر التشريع بادعاء ان القران لا يفهمه الا النبي والمعصومين. هذا خطا القران لكل الناس. ايش قد ما تقدر تفهم ايش قد ما تقدر تغرف من اغرف من المعاني وال وبعضهم يقول لا اختصروا تفسير القران وترجمه القران لمجموعه من الناس وفي السوء تفسير باطني وتفسير خاص مثل المتصوف والاسماعيليه وهذا ايضا مرفوض. الاشاعره ايضا يقولون انه القران ابعد من فهمنا ومن كذا ولهذا انحرفوا في تفسير بعض الـ 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 الامور مثلا الله سبحانه وتعالى انساق الى قضيه التسهيم التوازن هو افضل شيء القران هو الاساس نحتاج الى التدبر نعم ما نقدر احنا نفسر مو مثل هذا نصر حامد ابو زيد اللي قال يعني هذول المفسرين او غيره من هذول المفكرين يقول هم رجال ونحن رجال رجال ليش بس هذول هم يتر يعني يفسروا احنا نقدر نفسر جواب لا يحتاج الى مؤهلات خاصه نعم تريد تدبر تريد تفهم تريد تجد ابعاد الايه ممكن الانسان يبحث ويوصل وهذا هو هدف القران انه دائما هو حي هو رطب هو فرش وممكن انه نستفيد من في كل زمان ومكان ان شاء الله في جلسه او ليله اخرى نتحدث عن مساله مجالات الهدى في القران نسال الله سبحانه وتعالى ان ينور عقولنا وقلوبنا على قرانه وكتابه وان يجعله ان شاء الله حارسا لنا في الدنيا والاخره ان نسال نجيب الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله الطاهرين.